What's up? My name is Technobe here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be taking you through installing and getting started with Stable Diffusion Web UI using one of the most popular web interfaces out there. It's self-hosted, completely free, and that's Automatic 1111, or just Automatic 1. It's the most popular for a reason, and that's because it's so powerful. Not only can you generate and upscale images straight from your browser, you can also now train textual inversion, which is to get, say, yourself or another object or style into your artwork. And through the use of plugins, there's even integrated Dream Booth capability. Anyways, without getting too far into it, you'll need a relatively new graphics card, preferably from NVIDIA, as things are just a bit easier that way. In the description down below, you'll find a link to GitHub. We'll be heading across there. Do note that this guide is for Windows, and if you'd like an installation guide for Linux or WSL, you'll find one linked in the description down below. So the GitHub page over here has, first of all, a list of different files, which we'll be downloading in a minute, followed by some general info and features about the project here. Scrolling past all of these, we'll eventually get to installation and running. Over here, we'll find dependency information, as well as information for NVIDIA and AMD. For NVIDIA, there's nothing special that needs to be done. However, for AMD, there's a few extra steps Steps that you may need to follow if things aren't working properly. Anyways, you'll find the information there. I'm using an NVIDIA 3080 Ti, so it's more than happy to work here. Just make sure you have the latest drivers downloaded and installed. Beyond that, let's get to the actual project itself. First of all, we'll need to download and install Python 3.10.6. Note that this may be different at the time of you watching this. Just head across to this section and click the link here. For the Python download, look for Windows Installer 64 bit. Click this. Then open it up, make sure that add Python to path is ticked. This is very important. And then click install, wait for it to finish. Then you can close it. Heading back to the GitHub page here, we'll be downloading Git next. So I'll click Git here. And on the downloads page, I'll choose 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Once again, open it up. And this time when you click through this, you'll see that there's a ton of options. We don't need to make sure that anything special is ticked or unticked. Just click through it all the way to completion. There's nothing we need to change. So there we go. Of course, when it's done, you can untick release notes, finish, and head back to the GitHub page once more. Now we'll be downloading the latest Stable Diffusion Web UI, which is this page here, by running this command. So I'll copy git clone followed by this link here and not the trailing full stop here. Right click copy. Then we'll be opening a folder somewhere on our PC. I've simply made a new folder on my desktop called web UI video. Inside of here, click at the very top, type in CMD and hit enter. This will open up a command prompt window inside of the folder that we just created wherever this is on your PC. You can of course also navigate here by opening a terminal, typing in CD space, followed by the actual path itself. Note that if it has any spaces, include it in quotation marks. If it's on a different drive, you'll need to enter say E colon and hit enter. Anyways, now that we're inside of a blank folder, we'll paste this command and hit enter. Doing so, we'll download the latest Stable Diffusion web UI, which is just this GitHub page here, all of these different files, into a folder here called Stable Diffusion Web UI. I can close this terminal window here, and all we need to do is open the models folder here. We'll then see Stable Diffusion, open this up, and we'll be placing a checkpoint here now. So heading back to GitHub, we'll need to place model checkpoint files into the models folder. See dependencies for where to get it. So I'll open dependencies in a new tab and scrolling down here, we'll see stable diffusion model checkpoint. A file with .ckpt needs to be downloaded and placed in the models stable diffusion directory. We have an official download as well as a third party file storage download. Do note that at the time of recording, this is the 1.4 version. If we head across to the hugging face link, which is the official download, we can head back to the comp viz here. Scrolling down, you'll see 1.3, 4. And of course, if we copy this, then search hugging face for 1.5, for example, we can find runway ML stable diffusion 1.5. Once again, we can download this. Do note that you will need an account here and you will need to accept something before you can download. Head across to files and versions. And inside of here, we'll see usually a pruned copy and say EMA only or trimmed or something along those lines. If you're gonna be training, you'll need to pick the normal version here, which is usually much bigger than a trimmed or pruned version, which is much smaller. If you're purely generating images, you can download the trimmed one. To download one of these, simply click the download button next to it and it'll download in your browser. When it's done, we'll move this to the correct folder. 
there we go. So 1.5 pruned.ckpt is in this folder here, models stable diffusion. Right, we can head back to the original GitHub page and we see optionally we can download GFP GAN or we can also download ESR GAN from any GAN from the model database and simply place the path files next to web UI in our main folder. This I'll be skipping as you don't really need these. Next up, just running the web UI user.bat. So heading back to the main folder here and scrolling down, you'll see web UI user.bat. I'll right click this and choose edit. Now it should be open in a text editor like notepad. All we need to do is find out where Python is installed and set it here inside of quotation marks. So I'll hit start, type in Python, right click Python and choose open file location. Then if you see a shortcut file and no folders, right click this, then choose open file location. Now we're where it's installed. Right click python.exe and choose copy as path. Then inside of our notepad file here, we can paste it in. And if you copied it this way, it should include quotation marks already. Anyways, at this point, we can control S to save it. And optionally, to improve things a bit more, in this blank space here, we can add git pull. That way, every time, just before we actually launch it, it'll update all of the files in our folder here. Inside of the command line args here, we're not going to add anything, but inside of here is where you'd add things like low VRAM and options like that. If you have a lower end graphics card or just want to generally troubleshoot, head back to the GitHub page, then the wiki at the very top, we'll scroll down, find and click on troubleshooting. Then you'll see some options here, for example, for low VRAM video cards, we have lots of different options. And for example, we could add maybe med VRAM. So we'll copy this and paste it in here next to command line args. But that's only if you have a small amount of VRAM or you'd like to customize it by adding command line arguments. This is where you do it. So control S to save. We can close this and now we can get to actually running it. So all we need to do is run the web UI user.bat here. At this point, a few files will download and this could take a very long time depending on your internet and your PC's speed. It'll download Torch, Torch Vision, as well as a few other Python programs and extensions and things like that. Even though it looks like it's doing nothing, it is doing things. Trust me, you'll just need to sit around for a while. You can open up your task manager and head across to the ethernet or wireless tab and you'll see some activity here as well. Same thing goes for the main processes tab here. I can sort by disk usage. And once again, Python is doing a lot on my disk and maybe a bit on my network as well. Anyways, if you see any errors about not having the right version of PyTorch or something along those lines, and you don't know what to do, close this window and inside of the web UI folder here, locate vnv and delete this as well as the tmp folder, then run the file once more and it should download everything fresh, that being Torch, Torch Vision and whatever other extensions it needs. There we go. After about 10 minutes, it's launching the main web UI and shortly after, we'll see a link appear in the text box here. There we go, running on local URL, followed by a link. All we need to do is control click this or paste it into a browser and we can start generating images. So I'll enter and hit generate. Now, if we have a look at the console, you'll see some things happening here and eventually an image. Pretty cool. So for upscaling, for example, I'll click send to extras when I have the image previewed. Then on the extras tab up here, all we need to do is set a size and click generate. Then shortly after, you'll see an image appear here. Pretty cool. Of course, you may want to make this a bit bigger, maybe not eight, but four. Resize and poof. There we go. It's already a lot better. Of course, on top of this, you can choose an upscaler from one of the options here or add your own as well as things like GFP GAN, Codeformer, etc. Anyways, at this point, things are working. We can use image to image, head across to the extras tab for upscaling, merge checkpoints, train our own embeddings and hyper networks, edit settings, which there are a ton of nowadays. And on the extensions tab, we can head across to available, click load from, and there's a ton of extensions here, including Dream Booth, for example. Anyways, that's getting started. At this point, you can already mess around and do whatever you want. It's stable diffusion, as you'd hope. And of course, it's running locally on your PC. You can do whatever you want with it, including all the way down here at the bottom of the settings. You can toggle a rather spicy option or rather turn it on if you don't want those spicy things showing. Just make sure you hit apply settings when you're done. Anyways, thank you all for watching this very in-depth guide. Hopefully this video helped you. Mine's been Techno here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.